you know, so these days people buy commercial properties and rent them to businesses, rent them to shops. Um, is this something that you guys believe is lucrative and maybe someone can look into? 100%, man. So when it comes to rental is that um, you need to understand what is your goal. This is what we say to all our clients, right? Once you understand what is your goal, it's easier for you to actually grow and it's easier for you to identify the right properties that will fit in your portfolio. Welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it is a weekday. You guys know we are already talking property. That is the standard we are talking on the past topics that will keep you glued <laughs> to your screens. Tonight we are talking about something that I always mention every time we start an episode to say we want you to be able to grow your property portfolio and to increase it. So if you are already a property investor or are looking into going into property investment, stay tuned tuned this is the time to send this link to anybody you think is going to be able to benefit from the conversation we are having tonight and you are absolutely going to enjoy it if you are joining us on the twitter spaces thank you so much we really really appreciate it thank you thank you for for always coming through and sharing your evening with us so as i said we are talking tips on how to improve your return and T tonight, tonight's one is quite interesting because I have two brothers who are going to be talking to us about how they have started this um, this journey and they are going to uh, give us tips, you know, those tricks and why they decided to go this way and and um, and venture into property. So I am with the guys from No Wealth. Good evening, guys, and welcome to the show. Good evening to everybody. Hope that you are well. Hope that you are ready for property investing because um, we are going to really simplify it and make it digestible, as uh, some people would say, because I understand with property investing, there's a whole lot of jargon, people speaking about economic uh, factors, mm -hmm. speaking about a whole lot of things. So now we're just trying to make it as simple as possible for everybody to really understand. Oh man, it's a Friday night and we're all here, so we're going to make it worthwhile. Man. Let's get into it. <laughs> Definitely. So, um, uh, the Nong brothers, one is Ole and one is Neo. So tell us which one is which. And before we carry on, because I'm sure everybody wants to know, are you guys twins? <laughs> Neo is the one that likes to smile more. Yeah. So <laughs> this is my brother Neo. And then I am Lebo. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's the negotiator. He's the top negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. And let's kick off the conversation. I really like um, the direction it's going. And tell us a bit more about No Wealth, um, why you guys decided to, to start it up, and the reason behind you guys putting it together. Yeah. So what happened is that, I know we always say the story, however, it's really funny. So what happened is that um, both studied until honors level. So I finished earlier. I went to go work. And then Lebo came through. And then Lebo was like, as soon as he graduated, he was like, no, man. Let's actually go into property investing. So I didn't hesitate. I listened to him. The, I'll just put it out there. It's very important to listen to your younger brother. They always, they won't lead you astray. So I listened to him and then we actually started off with regards to a e-hailing company. Then we went in, generated as much money as we could. And then what we then did is that after a while, we went into property investing. So here we are today talking about property. Sure. And you know, when we're talking property investments, um, there's different kinds. There's different kinds of investments that one can go into dependent on, on your risk, your level of uh, your level of risk appetite, rather, um, and how much money you have and capital that you've saved up. And this is like with any other investment. So just talk to us, uh, talk, talk us through the different types of property investment one gets and how one would know which one to go for if they are starting out, if they are, um, they've been in the market for a while and if maybe they just want to pivot their, their portfolio. Can you guys hear me? Hello? 
seems like we're having technical glitches there, getting um, the the Nong, the Nong brothers from Nong Wealth. But in the meantime, send us your questions on Facebook or if you have any questions that are regarding property investments and how one can pivot it because um, this is what we ultimately want to do. We want to help you as, an, uh, as a viewer and as a, a, a part of the private property family to be able to grow your property portfolio. So keep sending us those questions, keep sending the love, and we will try and get them back on the line. And it seems like we have them back. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Can you, can you quickly just switch, switch Wi-Fi right now? Just a second. Just a second, please. Sorry about okay, that. So you guys, yes. Um, please switch the Wi-Fi so that um, we are able to hear you. Cool. While they are doing that, let me greet everybody who's watching us on the... Um, on the Facebook page. Okay. Glad Shirinda yes. is here. Princess sure. Shokosi is also here. And... Semi Mashate says, uh, I'm just here to say hello. Hi to you, Semi, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. And everybody else who is joining us, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lebo Khan Kawakit is also here. Thank you so much, Lebo, for joining us. Um, and Matha Shigange. Oh, the, our regulars are definitely here. Thank you guys for, for so much for joining us. Remember to send us those questions so that when we are now tackling, um, the when we have the, the, the brothers back, they can maybe take us through some of those questions and we can... We can start going. Um, are you guys back? Can you hear me now? Yes, 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 we're back. Sorry Perfect. about that. Perfect, no worries. Um, so I was just, my question was that, um, talk us through the different um, investment strategies, not even strategies, but investment types that one um, gets in, in property. How do they look? And based on your risk appetite and what you are able to afford at the time, which one would be best for a beginner, someone who's been in the field for two or three years, and somebody who really wants to pivot um, their portfolio? Okay. So now we always say that with property investing, it's not a one-size-fits-all uh, situation, that one situation might be different from one person to another, be it that they are a beginner or they've been actually investing in property for a long time. So something that you really need to consider, number one, is that what is your situation in terms of the income that you're actually getting? I mean, we were in a situation whereby we are renting out a property, the return on investment, or how much we're actually getting the interest based on what we have actually put into this property was actually good. However, when you're looking at the money that's coming to us, we were getting 1,500. And now looking at that situation whereby we both left work and now we're focusing on property investing full-time, 1,500 doesn't really make sense for us. So the flipping strategy was more ideal for us to actually invest in. So we're talking um, these different strategies that one can use, and I know that we're going to be going into some of those ones um, a bit later. But um, talk to us about um, if what is the best strategy to use? Um, a lot of people, when it comes to property, say stuff like it's better for you to really buy in, in, a, great pro in a great location so that you can then improve and you know, start renovating your property. And someone is like, no, buy in a place where you know that you're going to get occupancy, you know it's going to be quick, you're going to be able to put somebody in the, in the, in the property and you'll already be making money from day one. So how, how, what, what advice would you guys give somebody uh, to say when you're going into investing, solely how best is it um for someone to do do i like the conversation that we had before we went live in terms of us as people in terms of having conversations about property investing at the price stand so we have come to realize that there's those type of conversations at the price stand and then there's real conversations about property investing that we should be having whereby we remove the mask of property investing. So what am I saying when I'm saying that? I'm talking about, let's put the cement, let's put the bricks, let's put the tenant aside, and let's really speak about the return on investment. So now once we start talking about what return on investment am I getting with such a property, now we're getting to the real stuff. Because at the end of the day, the reason why we are investing into property, as it says, is property investment. It is an investment. So I'm not speculating. So now I really need to be careful in terms of the type of properties that I'm buying and what returns would I be projecting? Because I like giving out this example that if you go to two banks, right? Bank A and Bank B, 
Bank A says they will give you 10% return on investment if you save with them annually. And then you go to Bank B, they say they'll give you 20%. It's a no brainer, right? That you will go for Bank B, which will give you 20%. Now, our main question is that why don't we use the same principle when it comes to property investing? So instead of me buying the first property that I see on a property platform, I must be really interrogating that property that why should I be investing in that property? Because ultimately it is an investment. I want, I want us to now go into some practical steps that you guys have, have taken, you know, in, um, in growing your, your own property portfolio. You know, um, I know we've been talking about these things in terms of industry norms and um, what, what is out there and what, how things happen in the industry. I want us to zoom it in a bit and bring it uh, home to say, what are some of those strategies that you guys have employed um, or some, some of those um, investment categories that you guys are using currently um we were speaking a little bit offline about um flipping um talk to us a little bit more about that why you guys choose to use those uh those kind of of investments and why um it fits in to your life currently and um wh what advice you would give to somebody who's looking to do to 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 use the same strategy Okay. So now with flipping a property, basically what we're saying is that you're buying a property below market value, you're fixing it up and you then you're reselling it. And now the one of the strategies that we actually use, especially when you're looking at negotiation, is that I would never negotiate based on the number of how, or how many rents am I actually looking at. So what I mean by that is that if I'm going to be negotiating, it's not going, going to be based on that I'm negotiating uh, 10 rent of how much I'm actually going to be getting from the property. We need to speak with percentages because if you, if you come to think about it, real estate agents don't get paid based on 1,000 or 10,000 rents for selling a property. They base it based on a percentage. So as property investors, we need to actually include that within our strategy that if I'm going to be negotiating, I need to calculate that what is the value of the property? I'll, I'll put numbers there. So if the property is valued at 1 million, I need to negotiate it at 70% below market value. So I'm planning on actually buying it at 70%. So if the property is worth 1 million, I need to actually purchase the property at 700,000 in order for me to actually make a profit. So that's one of the strategies that we are using right now to make sure that we are actually going to be getting a profit on a monthly basis. Stuff like renting um, um, properties out or even commercial properties. You know, so these days people buy commercial properties and rent them to businesses, rent them to shops. Um, is this something that you guys believe is lucrative and maybe someone can look into? 100%, man. So when it comes to rental is that um, you need to understand what is your goal. This is what we say to all our clients, right? Once you understand what is your goal, it's easier for you to actually grow and it's easier for you to identify the right properties that will fit in your portfolio. So what am I saying in terms of goal? If, you, if your goal is, let's say, in terms of your cash flow, you would want 10,000 in terms of cash flow. So now you know that the properties that you will be buying are properties that are going to lead you closer to 10,000. And when I'm saying lead you closer to 10,000, we're speaking about that word cash flow positive. So now if it's cash flow positive 2000, what I'm saying is that you can break it down in terms of 10,000, which is our goal, divided by the 2000, that's five. So I know that if I'm buying five of these, I would have reached my goal. However, now if you are buying sporadically without understanding the cash flow of that property, you end up buying properties, for instance, that will give you a hundred rand cash flow. And now when you're looking at your goal, which is financial freedom, and then now when we're sitting like this in terms of finances, let us discuss finances with regards to what is financial freedom for you? We don't have that number. So it becomes hard to also identify the type of properties that you should be buying that will lead you to that goal. So cash flow is king. However, now if you do not understand the type of property that will lead you there, then you'll be playing a game whereby you're saying that property is a long-term goal and long-term goal will not have an end date. You'll constantly be, be buying until you finish that home loan. And I do not want that for people out there. We need to buy intentionally. And if there's one thing that I'd really like to leave the audience with, 
is that when you are actually purchasing a property, be it it's with commercial or be it it's with residential, never buy a property that's actually going to be running cash flow negative. Hmm. Never purchase a property that's going to be running cash flow negative because at the end of the day, if something does happen with your current income right now, yeah. the first thing that you're going to need to sell would be the property that you actually bought, which you thought was for investment purposes. Hmm. Whereas if you do lose your job or you do lose your income, it won't be an investment anymore and you need to sell it below market value because you need to get out of the deal as soon as possible. However, if the property is actually giving you some sort of cash flow, you know that even if you do lose your job, you're still comfortable with it. Um, you spoke a little bit more, um, or you spoke a bit about um, negotiating when you are buying a property. And when, when does this happen <laughs> when you're negotiating to buy the property is it that you are buying it through an auction or you you go onto a site like private property and then you look for 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 that property you like and then you negotiate once you guys are now doing offer to purchase um when exactly do you start the negotiations this is when you are acquiring the property so negotiations start with regards to running your numbers so what will happen is that you see a property on property 24 and then you see that, okay, I can actually make sense of it when I'm looking at the, the, the numbers of it. For, so when I'm saying the numbers, I'm talking about how much will I be paying versus the rental income that I can get. So where will I get the information about the rental income? I can call five agents that do not have nothing to benefit with this particular deal. And then they'll be able to actually give me the numbers in terms of, okay, you might be getting 6.5 from this property. And then now I also understand that the bond with regards to this and also my interest rates, because I would have spoken with my bond originator, she will then let me know that with this property, you'll be paying X amount, you'll be paying X amount. And then now I know that, okay, now looking at this property, where am I actually going to get go in? I'm going to go there with my contractor. He is going to make sure that he writes down everything that needs to be fixed and an amount that will be associated to that. It won't be amount amount that he sucked from his thumb. He's literally going to tell me that the roofing is going to cost X amount. Painting is going to cost X amount. Everything. And then now when I go back to the agent, this can actually even take me a day. When I go back to the agent, I'm going to be like, you know what? I see that you listed it at X amount. I'm serious about this property. However, for it to make sense to me because I'm buying the business, I need to buy it at X amount. Of course. So now when you're looking at the properties that are negotiable, right? Most of the time what you do is that you'd go into private property and you'd search for an area. And then when you do get that area, I like private property because you're able to actually um, arrange it from the lowest to the highest. Yeah. So most of the time, the lowest property that will actually be there would be the lowest, which you'd be able to actually negotiate with. Yeah. So most of the time when you're going into a property or when you want to purchase a property, a lot of people are ashamed of negotiating because it might seem as if they don't have any money or you're offending, or you're offending that person. But mm. at the end of the day, they are asking for a price and it's up to you that do you want to give them that price or don't you want to give them that price? Yeah. If they do reject you, I mean, that's the name of the game. Anytime anybody rejects my offer, I'm still okay because I know that I've done 30 offers. The only time it becomes personal is that if I was really looking at this deal and really wanted wanting this deal, that's when it became that's when it becomes offensive. So I feel like a lot of people should use platforms such as your private property to actually look at um, the properties that are there. Make sure that you know how to actually use the platform so that it yields you the best results there. Just to wrap up, right? Last time I remember our tagline when we were on uh, private property, it was I'm obsessed with property, right? This time. I'll put it out there is that if you don't negotiate, you'll probably be negotiated. <laughs> so you best negotiate. <laughs> Uh, Levo, I see why Neo was saying the master negotiator because, man, you've got that negotiation on lockdown. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, gents. Um, uh, we're having so much love coming from social media. People are, are legit saying that this, this the information you guys are giving us tonight is a really premium. Um, thank you so much for that. And, and we are almost at the tail end of our conversation, so I want to start wrapping it up and say, if you, if you were to advise anybody who wants to go into property investment, no matter at what level that they are, what would you guys say? What are the key main things that you would be advised 
uh, from you to them and even to those people who are already in the market you know who are who are who've been doing this for years um remind them some of those nuggets that they need to 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 think about and bring to the to the front of their minds as they make these transactions okay for me it actually it's it's actually painful how some property investors out there go we go out there to invest because they do have the cash or the credit so to them is that the time is right and i'm going in right now without understanding how deep is this pool so what we did from the onset is that we saw that we need to surround ourselves with experts so we have an expert conveyancer we have an expert bond originator we have an expert contractor when you're looking at all of these experts they are looking at us as individuals so they tailor make their service towards us i'll give you an example why it's very important to surround yourself with experts that care about you and you're not just a number. So what happened is that with the other deal that we were actually signing, it took about, before we actually surrounded ourselves with the experts, it took about one year, six months. However, now with the conveyance of the property lawyer that we have, Suspect, uh, she literally, it legit took her one month and she updates you on a weekly basis in terms of how far is the update. So I'll stress again that you can't go in property investing alone. You can also come through to our events, man, where we have all our experts and have a party. And it's, it's really nice speaking to the different people in terms of how they can add value to your journey. Of course, and then from my side is that you never should sign a deal before you really understand what you're putting yourself into. So if say, for instance, you don't know how much cash flow are you actually going to be getting, or you don't know how much you're going to be getting on a monthly basis, do not sign that deal you need to know all of the expenses that you are actually going to incur before you sign that offer to purchase so that you know that when you do sign your offer to purchase, it's more of an exciting feeling that, you know what, it's my first day at work. I'm going to get paid at the end of the month or not knowing that at the end of the month, am I actually going to get paid? We're using the same principle and putting it into property investing mm -hmm. that when I'm signing that offer to purchase, I know that at the end of the month, I'm going to get paid and this Excellent. property is not going to be chowing my money. Sure. 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 So information and using that information is very, very important. Thank you so much, gents, for joining us tonight. I can't believe that the conversation is already over. But thank you so much for, for the wisdom and for, for the information that you guys shared. I'm sure a lot of people have been helped um, by the information that you guys shared to, uh, tonight. And we really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Cheers. Thanks. Have a good night. And just like that, we have reached the end of our conversation tonight. And I was with the, the Nong brothers from Nong Wealth who spoke to us about how to, how to increase that property investment and how to go into it if you're already thinking about it. Um, if you have joined us tonight and you have stayed till the end of the conversation, I am sure you really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for joining us again. And we hope to see you every weekday, 7 p.m. right here on the Private Property Podcast. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.